Right, that was just a few machining scenes of me making this um, bearing housing up here for the um, Myford ML7 and I'm making a new tool post drill. Um, you may have seen my video last week where I made this um, tool post to house an ER40 um, collet chuck so that I can do slitting saw work, uh, power feed, um, reaming and uh, small milling operations like um, uh, doing keyway slots in spindles or whatever and I thought in the week it'd be really good to actually use this one to house a tool post drill as well. So this is the finished housing with the bearing cups pushed in and seated uh, both ends. Um, I always leave a small shoulder for the bearing cup obviously to seat up against nicely but I bore out the centre here so that I'm able to actually drift the bearing cups out from the opposite end if I need to in the future. So you can see down there there's a bit of a shoulder of the actual bearing cup to be able to get a drift on or a small bearing puller. Um, you can see there that I've actually bored the um, bores for those bearing cups a bit deeper leaving about um, about six millimeter at the front here and that's for the uh, Delrin seals that I made uh, to go over the front of the tapered roller bearings to stop any swarf getting in the bearing and I bought this ER20 collet chuck with a 150 millimeter length um, spindle on the back here that's exactly 20 millimeter it's been ground nicely and I chose a bearing to actually fit that one and obviously fit the housing and I'll put the number of the actual bearing that I used below so this one goes into the housing like this put the um, other bearing on the spindle there it's a nice um, tight fit Obviously I'll put it together with um, grease when I've um, finished it all together. This is my Delrin cover that fits the bore nicely and pushes over to protect that bearing. And the one in the back. And then I've made this collar here um, with a diameter at the front here which uh, goes inside the um, bearing cover so it won't actually touch the diameter of that one but it'll sit nicely up against the actual bearing to adjust the end flow. And then I can just hold it together like that and tighten these two um, grub screws to lock that in position and that's given me the end flow perfectly what I need so there's no movement at all in that one uh, backwards and forwards it's just the right tightness and then I made this sleeve up here out of brass which fits in the back of the um, uh, collet chuck spindle there nice tight fit and I'm going to put that one in with Loctite 638 and then I've got one of these um, bits out of a, a little socket set you can get um, very cheap socket sets with this um, hexagon piece in the back here that one is going to be pressed into that one with Loctite 638 and then the brass one with Loctite 638 um, in there all pressed together and let set. I've made this diameter here so it'll sit up against the back of the um, spindle part here but it's smaller than the actual diameter here so I can actually uh, take this collar off and then I can use an ordinary electric drill um, on the lathe to actually drive it. And I can do um, both ways, so I can actually do the face of a um, component that way round, 
or I can put it in this way round for doing um, indexed holes around a diameter of a piece of work. So it's a great piece of kit and it locks into the um, tool post with this one here and obviously you can slide it backwards and forwards to get um, whatever movement you want on the cross slide. And having nice sized tapered roller bearings uh, will make it actually great for um, drilling and probably um, small um, milling operations as well. So um, in my next video, I'll show this one working on the Myfred ML7.